so here's part two about um, you know how I perceive my body. I'm going to be talking about um, you know my downstairs area as well as just the rest of my body in general because I don't really want to talk about my genitals for like ten minutes. So um, yeah, if you haven't seen part one, I made it about my chest. Um, but, because I have a lot to talk about my chest, but this will be about my downstairs area and just the rest of my body and, and the, the way that my perception of it and my feelings towards it have changed since starting testosterone. Um, so if you don't want to hear about any of that, then, uh, I would X out of this video now. Um, so basically, uh, as I said in my other video, I never really looked at my body at all. Um, I, you know, avoided mirrors. I, that's not true. I looked in mirrors and I hated what I saw. I would stare in the mirror for a very long time because you haven't seen this part of my room, but I'm sitting right here is a wall of, of my closet is two mirrors. The door is two mirrors. And then right over there next to the closet is a cabinet with a giant mirror. So I pretty much have an entire wall of mirrors in my room, and it's been like that since I was 14. So, um, I was constantly looking in mirrors and hating what I saw. I would, you know, try on clothes all the time to try and find something I liked, but I didn't like the way it fit. And I just couldn't, you know, look at myself in the mirror clothed, let alone look at my body without clothes on. Um, I have an obsession that's still here of, with body hair on me. Um, that hasn't gone away because I've been obsessed with growing body hair since I was, you know, 10 or 11. Um, and that's just, you know, I think that's a regular thing because all the guys I used to hang out with in middle school, we'd all be talking about like hair and, and you know, being excited about all these changes and stuff. Um, of course, for a time I had more leg hair than them because I hit puberty first and I've never shaved in my life. Um, but then of course, when the rest of my male peers started hitting puberty, um, you know, they grew more leg hair and so forth. Um, but now I have leg hair. <laughs> uh, so I've always been obsessed with body hair. So that was something I was so excited for starting testosterone um, and I absolutely love it because it went from something in middle school that I was so excited about to something I was ashamed of because I you know it looked like my legs were hairless because I have red hair and my body hair is is really fair and light not not so much anymore but it used to be very fair and light so even though I had quite a bit of leg hair you couldn't see it and I would have people come up to me and would ask me, you know, why I shaved my legs um, because I'm a guy. And they're like, and I would be like, I don't shave my legs. I just don't have a lot of leg hair. And um, so that was distressing to me, not only in to myself who I, who, you know, I wanted leg hair, but the fact that other people noticed that I, that I looked like I didn't have leg hair really upset me. And, um, you know, being able to just touch my, my leg right here, like touch my shin, and I feel all of that hair there, um, to be able to, you know, touch my stomach, just touch anywhere on my body and my skin is rougher and there's hair is so amazing to me. It feels like my body because before, like feeling that soft skin and, you know, fair hair before testosterone felt so foreign to me and it just, I cringed, I couldn't handle it. And, um, so the hair is coarser, longer and darker now, which is great. Um, so getting to my downstairs area, I guess I just hit the mirror. Um, pre-T again, I, I didn't look down, um, pretty, uh, about a month or so after I started testosterone, I started looking down because I was curious to see what was going to happen down there because that was the one thing that I did not research. Um, 
about testosterone. I knew that there was going to be growth, but I didn't look into it. So my mind was like, what is going to happen here? Um, I had no idea. And so I started looking down for curiosity's sake. I wanted to know what was happening to my body. And I was still very uncomfortable, but my curiosity took over. And it wasn't until I said this in another video, um, about my expectations of testosterone or something like that, um, that a few months ago, I started becoming very fascinated with my downstairs area because I don't, I don't know why, <laughs> because I don't necessarily like it to the extent that I think I'll be happy with it for the rest of my life. Um, I do, I can very realistically see myself looking into bottom surgery in the near future. I want to get over the few <laughs> surgeries I need to get done first, but I can very well see myself having bottom surgery of some sort, um, eventually. And so in that sense, I'm not content with what's down there in the sense that I want that to be there forever, but I think it's enough right now. Um, because I am still fascinated by my body at this point. And I think that it's important for me to take this time to explore my body the way it is now. Um, strictly speaking of, you know, apart from my chest, which I am getting rid of hopefully soon, but the rest of my body that I know is going to be there for a while. Um, and especially since I've never explored that part of my body ever, because I was so ashamed and disgusted by it that I just couldn't handle it. But now I'm in a spot where I'm so level headed about it. And I know that in the future, I want it to change, but it's not the future yet. So I need to not continue on the path I was pre T, which was don't look down, don't do anything, don't, you know, think about it. Because I don't know, I think I'm just going to ride this curiosity and ride this um, sense of um, exploration, I guess. Uh, and I think I'm happy with that right now. Um, which is fascinating to me because I just I don't know what I was assuming pre-T. I, I think I was assuming I would stay on that path of I'm not going to look down. I'm not going to like what I see. I'm not going to, you know, um, I don't really know. But I just am in such a good place right now that while I still experience dysphoria every time I have to go to the bathroom because I know I can't stand uh, without the help of an STP, um, you know, I, I know all of these things, public bathrooms still stress me out because I can't go to the urinal. I like these things are distressing to me on a daily basis, but, and I still pack all the time, but there's still that part of me that's fascinated with what's going on. And I think that that's really good for me right now. Um, what else? I think just looking in the mirror um, and being able to look in the mirror in the morning or just any time, but I mean when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror and I get ready to go out for whatever it is I'm doing that day, I can look in the mirror and, and genuinely see myself as an attractive person I think is really important and something that's never been possible for me before because I hated my appearance so much. Um, so I think that that's something that, that testosterone has really done for me, um, is brought me to a place where I can look in the mirror and think I like what I see. And I think that, you know, other people can like what, what they see as well in, in me physically. Um, because I think when you hate yourself so much, 
there's, and you hate your appearance so much, there's this assumption that everybody else hates your appearance and everybody else, you know, thinks that you're disgusting or whatever it is you think of yourself. And for me to look in the mirror and think, you know what, I don't think I'm the most attractive guy on the planet, but I don't think I'm ugly and I don't think that, um, that everybody else finds me ugly. Um, that potential for <laughs> attractiveness, I guess, is uplifting. Um, and having other people tell me that I'm attractive is something new to me as well. Um, I shouldn't say that. No, that's not true. But before, when people would tell me I was attractive, I didn't really believe them because I hated what I saw. So if they told me that I was attractive, I was like, okay, whatever. I brushed it off because I'm like, well, I don't think so. So yeah, whatever. But you know, now when people tell me that they think I'm attractive, it feels good because I like what I see. So if they like what they see as well, it's, it just all fits. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that, but, um, just being able to explore my body in ways that I haven't ever been able to before, um, is really, really exciting to me. I, I love it. I love where I am right now. Um, in regards to my body, um, like I'm just having a blast. That sounds really weird, but I'm just having a blast because all of this stuff is so new and it's constantly changing and it's so much fun to just explore yourself when you've shut yourself off from your body for, you know, X amount of years, uh, to be able to really explore yourself and figure out, um, you know, where you want to be and where you are right now is so exciting. Um, and I really hope that, you know, everybody watching this, if you aren't already in a place like that, that I hope that you get to a place like that, um, regardless if you're trans or not, because it is a lot of fun to just like what you see in the mirror. Um, so I think that's what all I have to say. Um, as always, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions or anything like that, if you have video topics, let me know. And um, my top surgery fund will be in the description. I hopefully will have some good news. I'm not going to jinx it by saying what it is right now, but I hopefully will have some good news and updates soon. Um, so thank you for watching. See ya.